What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Justine and today I want to address a common misconception about cross-pollination in the garden. Um, I know that this is a pretty confusing topic for some people and I just want to try to explain it in the easiest way that I can so that you guys aren't super stressed about where you're planting your, your peppers and your tomatoes and all of that. So let's go over a couple of things. Okay, so here is my pepper bed. I have jalapenos here, I have bells here, sugar rush peaches here, and a Tabasco over there somewhere in this mumble jumbled mess. Now, something that I hear a lot of people say is, well, Justine, your bell peppers are gonna be spicy because they're planted by your jalapenos. And while that might be true, the next year, if I saved the seeds from that bell pepper and planted them, yes, that is very true. Heat overrides sweet, and a bee could have went from my jalapeno to my bell pepper, so next year, I could have a spicy bell pepper. But, this year, I got the true bell pepper seed. It was an heirloom seed, not a cross or a hybrid. I didn't buy it from anyone, so I know that that is a true bell pepper. So that bell pepper is not going to be spicy, even if it's planted by my jalapenos this year. This is honestly the simplest way I can explain it to you. It's kind of like, like, it's kind of like breeding two dogs. I have a poodle, I have a standard poodle, and I have a pit bull. If I bred my standard poodle to my pit bull, my poodle is still going to be a poodle. My pit bull is still going to be a pit bull. But when they have puppies, those are going to be crossed. So it's the same way in plants. The babies, which are the seeds out of the bell pepper, are going to be crossed with the jalapeno, potentially. That doesn't always mean that they will be crossed but it is likely with how close these are planted. Very closely planted here, I have a cantaloupe and a watermelon. Now, the reason I'm using this as an, as an example is because I actually was asked this um, this season. If someone could plant their watermelon next to their cantaloupe or if they would cross-pollinate and they would get a mix between the watermelon and the cantaloupe. And no, it's the same concept with the peppers, like I was saying. If you took, if you had a true watermelon seed and a true cantaloupe seed and you put those in the ground, off that cantaloupe plant, you're going to get cantaloupe. Off of the watermelon plant, you're gonna get a watermelon. However, if you save the seeds from the watermelon, there it could potentially give you a cross between a cantaloupe and a watermelon the next year. You're going to get a watermelon this year, but you save the seeds from the watermelon, you're going to potentially, it doesn't always happen, you know, if a bee didn't go from the cantaloupe to the watermelon and they didn't cross pollinate, then that melon should be good. Think of the seeds as babies. Those babies, if they were bred between the cantaloupe and the watermelon, then yes, they could. Okay, so this whole 60 foot row here are Amish paste tomatoes. Now, this is what an Amish paste, this is what an Amish paste tomato looks like. And I, I planted all Amish paste seeds. However, this plant here is a little different. So here's the Amish paste and here's a tomato that was supposed to be an Amish paste. What could have happened, someone who was saving the seeds from the Amish paste tomato saved a seed that they hadn't protected the blossom. This is a cross, but it did not cross this year. The seed that I planted had to have been from a tomato that had been crossed the year before. I hope I'm not making this confusing. If you want to make sure, if you want to save your own seeds from your heirloom um, tomatoes, and you want to ensure that you are definitely going to get an Amish paste tomato the next year, you know like the little mesh party bags that you can buy? Or maybe, I wouldn't say pantyhose because I think that that would maybe close up the flower a little bit, but the little mesh party bags that you can buy um, that have the string on them that tie like the bubbles in the wedding for the weddings, you can put those on top of your um, blossoms as before they open. You want to do this before they open. I was trying to find a blossom on a tomato to show you. But you want to put that over the blossom. You want to put that over the blossom before it opens. So when it's like this and it hasn't been pollinated, and then you put it on top and when it opens, you will just kind of come by and tap it 
And the reason you have that over that is so that no bees or bugs can get in to pollinate that from this variety of tomato to another variety of tomato. Then after it sets the fruit and it starts to form the fruit, then you can take off that bag. That ensures that you will get the same type of tomato. Um, but if you don't do that, and there's nothing wrong with not doing that, I truly think it's kind of fun to, you know, get different varieties. However, I like the Amish paste for my paste tomatoes um, and making a lot of paste. So if I, if I did uh, save the seeds from these, I would want to ensure that I am getting this so that I don't grow a whole 60 foot row of tomatoes that aren't Amish paste. One more thing I want to address before I end this video is this was a something that had gotten said to me and you know I just thought to myself that's that's just not how it works and I want to clear up the confusion for people because it can be confusing but it it doesn't have to be so it was said to me that maybe I shouldn't plant my peppers and my tomatoes next to each other because I could possibly get spicy tomatoes I have personally never heard of a spicy tomato before but I, that, that's, that's just simply not how it works. So that would be, they're two different species of, they're two different species of plants. And that would be like trying to breed a dog and a cat. Um, it just doesn't work that way. Uh, tomatoes and peppers cannot cross pollinate. Maybe somewhere in a lab they could maybe do that. I don't know, but that is not going to happen in nature. So don't worry about different for uh, different species of plants cross-pollinating that's not how it works tomatoes actually are self-pollinating so what that means is you can just tap them with your hand or any kind of vibration well they will self-pollinate themselves whereas like zucchini and squash plants they actually have male and female flowers and a bee has to go from the male flower to the female flower to be able to pollinate that um that is what I have to say, and I, I do hope that that helped you a little bit. I hope I didn't make that too confusing for you. Uh, it's really not confusing, you know, bring a, breeding a cat and a dog. I know that's really simplifying it, but it is that simple if you, you know, think of it that way. And then it, it does make gardening a little bit easier. So just know that anything that you plant that year, if it is the true heirloom seed that you planted, that's what you're going to get this year. If you plant your jalapenos and your pepper and your bell peppers next to each other, the bell pepper is not gonna take on the spicy flavor. If you save the seed from the bell pepper and plant it next year, it very well possibly could um, have a spicy flavor. Uh, but as far as the plant changing this year, that's not going to happen. So I hope this helped and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week from one gardener to another. See you guys in the next one.